Well, comrade chairman and comrades, I'd first of all like to make a complaint to the organizers in that comrade Harry had a film on Minneapolis, comrade Jack had a film on the NUM dispute. We're spitting images. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to bring the fraternal greetings from the Parliamentary Labour Party. I'd like to. <laughs> I'd like to bring the fraternal greetings from the campaign group of MPs. Well, those of them who are not after jobs as bag carriers for Neil Kinnock and some of the shadow members of uh, the Cabinet. Would you believe Dave Nellis? Comrades, in watching those films I referred to earlier, the struggles which are taking place in Liverpool have a connection to those particular struggles. When we see the struggles at Orgreave, the attacks on, working miners, uh, on striking miners by the police, when we refer back to 1926, we see a comparison in exactly the same thing taking place as did take place in 34 in Minneapolis. And people think we'll just have a, a bit of a cosy read about history, a bit of nostalgia. But we in Liverpool seriously dug out our copies of the Teamsters' Rebellion and tried to learn some of the lessons of organisation, of transportation and communication, which we're still looking at, by the way, in case this Tory government stumbles into a situation where Liverpool, from their point of view, is ungovernable but we'll keep the city going. But the question we've got to ask ourselves, given the titanic struggle of the miners in 26 and 84, 85, and the struggle of workers in the States throughout their history, what in the name of goodness has changed during that period? With the here in 1985, with the highest levels of recorded unemployment, with the economy in tatters, with despair and poverty, pervading the conditions of ordinary working people. And it's against that background that people in Liverpool, and I'm not going to go into the details, Comrade Derek Hatton will do that, are struggling today, fighting back as they've never fought back before behind the leadership of the Liverpool City Council. But it's not the whim of a few town hall trots or tendency tacticians which have brought Liverpool into the position it is in now. It's years of decline and neglect, years a catastrophe of misery for working people in Liverpool with the crimes of the Tories and the people that they represent. The social economic conditions prevailing in Liverpool over many decades, which have brought ordinary decent people <coughs> to political conclusions about what needs to be done. And in our struggle, we don't think it's too much to ask of the trade union and labour leaders to come along behind us and support those particular struggles. But we take it as an insult to the credibility and honesty of councillors like Comrade Derek Hatton and others here today in this hall who are prepared to give up their homes, their livelihoods, be declared bankrupt, to go to jail on behalf of working people and not receive the support of so-called trade union and labour leaders. Comrades, the gloves are off in this dispute. When people are trying to rub, rub, uh, throw packages down our throats, which mean a devastation of the services and more levels, high levels of unemployment in Liverpool, and we're resisting. The filth, the lies and the distortions appear from the lips of those so-called leaders. But we have to remind the movement, if they want to play dirty, we'll play dirty as well. We have to remind the movement of the role of these worthy gentlemen during the NUM dispute during the uh, NGA dispute, and where are they now during the Liverpool dispute? We have to ask the question, if they're so keen now and they're so put out about what we're doing in Liverpool, creating jobs, providing services, and looking after the interests of working people, and they're a bit uh, dis discomforted about all this, 
Where the hell have they been in the last 10 years or so? Where have they been since 1978 in Liverpool, when 65,000 jobs have gone in that period? Where were they when they were closing down Tate and Lyles, Associated Biscuits, United Biscuits, Sweps, BAT, Fords, British Leyland, GC Plessies? The catalogue is endless. Where the hell were they organising against the buses like they're organising now against the Liverpool City Council? Comrades, I don't know who's feeding Neil the information he's uh, spewing out, but he's certainly got the wrong end of the stick when he's talking about what we're trying to achieve in Liverpool. And it strikes me as very, very strange, you know, when he's putting forward the policies he is doing, on behalf of the Tory government, we might add, acting as an absolute, absolute obstacle in our campaign on behalf of Liverpool people. Oh, is it on one hand he's abusing us for what we're doing? And then suddenly in mysterious last week, John Prescott wakes up with the idea, attacking Lord Young on the levels of unemployment, and says, why don't you put building workers back to work and build houses for the people of the country? Well, that's what we're doing in Liverpool, and we're getting kicked around the streets for it by our Labour leaders. It was Keir Hardy who said, in fact, that if the press are beginning to praise you, you're doing something wrong. And they learn that lesson, mate. They're praising you now, but they'll kill you tomorrow. Learn the lesson and understand where the votes are. Not amongst the petty bourgeois, not amongst the jackals of Fleet Street, but amongst ordinary, decent working people who are being battered from morning to, to night, from pillar to post. So we're looking out for leadership at such a crucial time in the attacks that are taking place upon them. If you want to learn lessons, Neil, come up to Liverpool. We'll show you how you can raise your, your media image. We'll show you how you can raise support from working people, like the Liverpool City Council, who are now riding high in the polls. But about 60% of the people of Liverpool are back in the council and what they're doing, and rightly so. Comrades, there is no shame, particularly in the Labour Party, to stand up and say you're a Marxist. We stand up proudly, despite the criticisms, despite the abuse, despite the attack, and watching those films talking about the commies in Minneapolis. We've got the Trotskyite Leninists, I think we all are in Liverpool now. All lunatics people out to destroy, when in fact the opposite is the case, we're building. But we say to people that what's happening in Liverpool has happened with the NUM last year, will be the music of the future, because workers at long last are beginning to wake up to the calibre of leadership that is necessary during this period. If they're going to stand up and defend our jobs and services, our communities, then there can be no compromise with the bosses. There can be no compromise with this Thatcher government. There can be no compromise with this system which brutalises people day in and day out. But when that realisation dawns on people, workers will move into action if the issues are explained to them and if they understand what it's about. And therefore, the lies in the media are intended to throw dust in the eyes of working people about what progressive people like Marxists, militant supporters are all about. Our banner is the banner of socialism. We can stand proud and be undeterred by the attacks made against us, understanding that the personalisation of the issues is intended as a smokescreen. Comrades, our task is to educate the class as to the nature of society, to the bankruptcy of the system. But first, we need to educate ourselves. And in this respect, to those newer comrades here today, to anybody else that may be listening, in this respect, Militant plays a valuable role, an indispensable role in the education of reminding ourselves where we've been, where we are, but perhaps more importantly, where we're going. As Marxists, we have to understand that people can be sincere for as long as they like. What we're about is serious, serious about creating the conditions in society where youth can look forward to a future 
without the despair and horrendous lifestyle on drugs and unemployment. Where families, instead of being split because of economic circumstances, can be as they should be, places of home, of comfort and of love. Where old people, having made the contribution to society, can live out their twilight years with a little bit of decency because society today cannot provide that. And comrades, as far as we are concerned, the only way we're going to achieve these things is not as comrade Neil Kinnock says, <coughs> nationalising one bank and making money available to the ruling class at interest, uh, interest rates that the best they'll get elsewhere. The only way for us is not to nationalise one bank, is to take over the whole flaming lot, take over the banks, the insurance companies, big business, and put that will to work on behalf of working people. Comrades, whilst they're attacking us, we know we're on the right track. We can be confident that as time goes by, our future, the future which is in our own hands, we can, we can make, we can forge, we can plan for the future. But when workers finally wake up, see through the lies and distortions, and understand that what we as militant supporters are about, what Marxism and socialism holds out for them in the future, there will be no force on earth that will stop the movement of the working class. But a prerequisite of that is the leadership which is necessary to take us forward. We're about creating that leadership, not for the personal advancement of a few individuals, a leadership worthy of the class that we represent as members of the Labour Party and in our trade unions. Comrades, stand up to them. They can witch up the few out, but we'll grow and we'll grow and we'll grow. And yes, we'll have Wembley Stadium next year if necessary. We're on our way. Comrades, stand up. Stand up for socialism. Stand behind the banner of Marxism forward to a socialist society and a socialist world.